Okay, what's up guys? I am back again reacting to some more videos and uh, this video was uploaded by a channel what culture wrestling So I like these I like this guy's videos, you know He'll like teach you some things about like WWE that you didn't know about and so uh, yeah This is a very very informational channel. He has 321,000 subscribers channel like his he could he could at least have a million like seriously this dude's a really really good channel so i see like high hopes for this guy like I, i'm really interested in his channel but this video is called 10 things wwe wants you to forget about triple h now if you don't know i am a huge wwe fan been watching it for almost 10 years now for almost a good 10 years i remember when i moved when i very first moved into this house it was just flipping through the channels it was either, I think it was Friday Night Smackdown, I started watching that. Then I started watching Monday Night Raw. And then at the time, was watching ECW when it was on. But you know, yeah, I've been watching WWE for some years now. So I, you could say I love WWE at this point. I even called them up when I was like 12 years old <laughs> to ask them, when is it a good time to apply for you guys? They said 18, I am 19. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, that that dream of being a WWE wrestler, I'm I'm still living that dream. You know, I'm I still I still I wouldn't mind if it happened. You know, if they called me up saying we would like for you to uh be a wrestler for us, I'll say yeah, sure, set me up. All right, tables, ladders, and chairs match. Uh, probably the only thing I won't do is go up against Undertaker at WrestleMania. That's too much pressure on me. Seriously, I would cry if I had to do something like that. <laughs> but no, um. Let's uh let's 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 watch this video, see what it's about. This is a little bit loud, oh my goodness. Because he pretty much runs the company and will do so pretty much using that sledgehammer as a cane. Triple H rose from a ridiculous fop to the biggest heel in the company, to the king of kings, to the heir to the company using a strategy of guy no. talent and I remember that too when he told uh he's not gonna be when he told Vince McMahon he ain't gonna be the COO of wrestling anymore. Told him to step down. But I mean he's still the founder. Otherwise known as the Madison Square Garden incident. Now this seems okay. tame today, but back in nineteen ninety six it was the Oh, birth year, okay. Dog-sized bowel movement on Vince's company, by which uh -oh. I mean the bowel movement was the size of a dog. Now the clip was a backstage group. They were a cross between the Backstreet Boys and the Skull and Bones Club, made up of Scott Hall, <laughs> Kevin Nash, Triple H, X Buck, then the One Two Three Kid, and Shawn Michaels. They were a big group of influential <laughs> bezies. On May 19th, 1996, at a house show in Madison Square Garden, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were both wrestling their last matches for the company before leaving for WCW. Hall oh, wow. was wrestling Triple H, and Shawn was facing Nash in the main event. After that match scott hall and triple h joined nash and michaels in i remember the seeing this photo embraced completely breaking kayfabe a cardinal sin especially back in the 90s vince was furious and not only did the four men expose the business but sometimes uh -oh. had managed to tape them doing it with hall being gone and michaels being champion the punishment fell solely on helmsley he lost his planned king of the ring victory to steve austin and wrestled Dang. jobbers for months naughty Dang. boys number nine being burned by his own entrance triple h's oh, WrestleMania wow. entrances have always had a touch of the extravagance about them most of them have been genuinely longer than other matches on the card some of them are good like whenever motorhead play live some of them yeah. are terrible like this i remember wrestlemania 21 31, where triple h appeared dressed as a grumpy toy carrying a handful of stupid <laughs> shrunken robot heads the most embarrassing was his entrance at wrestlemania 29 when the game got second degree uh, burns from his own dang. special effects he appeared inside a big skull fortress thing bit dumb and then he walked through the entrance through what he thought was a jet of smoke was an actual fact dry ice it coated Ooh. the game's torso in the stuff whilst also horribly burning him the internet didn't realize this and spent the entire time mocking the man because he looked like a frosted treat number eight wow. a hog pen match a hog pen match is a wrestling match repeat wrestling match when your opponent wins by throwing you into a hog pen uh. wrestling <laughs> There's been only two proper hog pen matches in WWE. I'm not counting the redneck triathlon. No one should count that for anything. One involved Vicky Guerrero, an untrained manager, and Santina Morella, a man dressed as a I think I remember, yeah, I think I remember this. H in illustrious company trips. He battled Henry O. Godwin. His initials were hog. Ha 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 During the match, the got slop shoved in his face by a big hairy man, Ooh. but he eventually won the match by throwing Godwin into the pen and probably frightening the pigs who had no idea what was happening. Happening. Then Triple H himself ended up covered in mud. Remember, everybody, Dang. dignity is precious. And speaking of dignity, 
Number seven, his uh -oh. movies. Wow, Triple H is. Oh yeah, he he did do some movies. I remember he did like they have this one movie of his on Netflix. TV shows. Triple H has only got three movies under his belt, and they're all terrible. In two of the films, he plays a con coming out of prison. In the chaperone, he plays Ray. Ray yeah, this who's this movie? The chaperone. He's a strange daughter's field trip with escaping from mobsters, which is about as funny as a killing field. Much more funny is the super serious crime drama Inside Out. He was on the Bernie Mac show. I remember that. Says the little girl's head. Oh no! Wait. No, no. He plays an ex-con who has to hang around with Michael Rappaport wearing a silly hat. <laughs> Rappaport? Michael Rappaport. <laughs> Rappaport. Rappaport. <laughs> pork. Silly hat. And finally, Blade Trinity. I remember That's that. Triple I remember H's watching man, that. Like being the smartest Kardashian. Triple H <laughs> a vampire with a fat face and a tiny dog who can't beat Ryan Reynolds in a fight. A true <laughs> trilogy of terrible. Number six, being <laughs> by the Ultimate Warrior. A hundred uh -oh. seconds. It took less than a hundred seconds for the Ultimate Warrior to crush his WrestleMania 12 opponent. Who was that nameless jobber? Well, he actually had three names. Hunter, Hurst, Helmsley. Triple H hit the Warrior with a pedigree early in the match, which he immediately no-sold before casually removing his coat. Then uh -oh. planting Helmsley with the splash. Warrior was fired a few months later for no-showing events, so this accomplished precisely nothing. So the next <laughs> time you see the meme of Triple H with a shovel in his hand, just remember he's been on the wrong end of that spade in his own career. Number five, wow. his relationship with China. Yeah, relationship I remember I hearing China about this. The after they were, like, China, saying something, like, she had, um... Triple H was also in a relationship Stephanie McMahon with had ended their relationship. relationship with I mean, McMahon, yeah. And he and China broke up. However, the whole situation became incredibly messy. China claims that Triple H began seeing Stephanie whilst he and China were still together, uh. and the two had a physical dispute when she Ooh. confronted him about it, which Triple H steadfastly denies. China was fired from the company in 2001, not long after her relationship with Triple H came to an end, which seems especially cruel considering the problems China has had since leaving the company. It's a murky backstage issue, especially with Triple H saying on Austin's podcast that China is not being considered for the Hall of Fame, and the WWE Dang. would dearly like the whole matter to stay private and quiet. Number four, wow. how bad DX became. D-Generation X were genuinely game-changing when they arrived in the late 90s. They were the official heralds of a new wave of edgier, boundary-pushing content that became the Attitude Era. Shawn Michaels and Triple H were drunken doofus frat wow. boys making jokes about big sausages. And China, it, like, like, she looks bigger than Shawn Michaels. Like, like what do you see in her, man? I saw her, I remember, no, pause, wait a minute. I remember when I had seen her for the first time. And uh, it was like, it was, um, I got the ladder match DVD and it was Triple H versus The Rock. I think China was in that one or it might have been another video. I can't remember, but I remember the first time I seen her and I'm all like, that's a strange looking dude. What's wrong with this chest? Like that's, that's not normal for a man's chest to be round like that. Then I was all like, okay, I got it. Cause I think I had ended up Googling her and then was all like wow that's a girl okay <laughs> and so i was just i was kind of like shocked finding out but i'm all like dang she's like i it's i don't know man first time yeah she kind of she kind of scared me a little bit when i seen her but <laughs> the funniest video is seeing tyro magnus react to her twerking and then her busting her head <laughs> and then trying to play it out she was rather go watch that video man that was a funny video but anyways getting back to this video paint and it was giving off bad fumes almost a decade later the two man children were talking about vince mcmahon's cock doing unfunny skits whilst dressed as vince and shane and dropping poo on the mcmahon's heads also Dang. they beat up male cheerleaders one of which was a secret Dolph Ziggler. oh wow the new dx sucked they added Hornswoggle, the patron saint of <laughs> jumping the shark. Vince's illegitimate son, the anonymous Raw General Manager, DX. Whenever an idea runs out of steam, just add Hornswoggle to deliver the <laughs> blow. Number three, drugging his wife. Triple Ooh. H eventually did marry Stephanie McMahon and had incredibly yeah. wealthy children who were destined to have strong chins. But their storyline courtship began really, 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 really creepily. Triple H was feuding with Vince McMahon at the time and decided to hit him where it hurts, right in the daughter. Dang. Steph was going out with Ted and was set to marry him when naughty triple h showed up with a video of him marrying steph after wow. he drugged her unconscious and used 
no joke, ventriloquism to fool the drive through minister into officiating a wedding between them. Naturally, being married against your will after being poisoned by a man then forcibly kissed by him on national TV before he beats up your dad is quite the turn on for the modern woman because Stephanie fell in love with Triple H and they remain kayfabe married for years. Considering what wow. a power couple they are now on TV, the whole drugging thing is probably best left to history. Yeah. Number two, the racist feud with Booker T. Well, uh -oh. considering everything that's now happened with Hulk Hogan, this feud is suddenly looking super problematic, proof that maybe WWE wants to be careful when choke slamming stones in glass houses. In the lead up to WrestleMania 19, Booker T was feuding with Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. Triple H cut a promo on him saying that people like you don't get to be champion Ooh. and you're here to make people like me laugh. Dang. During the feud, he also called him <laughs> boy and threw <laughs> money at him before telling him to fetch me a towel. Also, wow. referred to Booker T to carry his bags. Literally, how can that happen in 2003? In the words of one other African-American champion, damn. When called on this horrendous bollocks, Triple H claimed that it wasn't about race and that people like you meant WCW guys. Shit, oh. <laughs> like Triple H was in 1994, you mean? <laughs> but you know, it's okay, Dang. right? Because Booker T proved Triple H's prejudice wrong and won the title, right? Ha 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 ha! Course he bloody didn't. WWE is a bad company sometimes. Number one, Katie Vick. Dang. Of course it's this. Of course it's Triple H romancing a mannequin in a coffin. It will oh yeah, I remember hearing that. I was so confused by this story, man. I was so confused. Of killing a woman in a car crash and then having sex with her while she was dead. Like, I thought she was... Pause, wait a minute. Because I remember... I wasn't watching wrestling at that time. I remember I got, like, this encyclopedia. Or I was on Google. I was somewhere reading about the WWE. And when I had came across the Katie Vick thing... I was all like, so, is this real? Is this not? Like, I'm confused. I don't know if this girl is alive, dead. And so, then, finally, seeing a videos of it, and then there was just a mannequin, I was like, wow, okay. So, there wasn't no Katie Vick. But, anyways, that was the most confusing story I think I've ever read. Side of a writer's room more. To cap off the cavalcade of absolute... Yeah, I remember dreams, watching that, and I was like, this was... Home, that was so weird. Home, ...got in a coffin and made gentle friends with a dummy dress like the aforementioned dead Weird. Woman. Wow, give that man a company. And that's our look. <laughs> Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can even follow me Dang. on Twitter. Here, I'm Adam from whatculture.com. Yeah, follow this guy, this dude. He has some of the most craziest videos. Like, I love watching his videos now. His videos are really good. Seriously, I don't think I've ever came across a channel like just strictly based off of WWE. Like, I, and it's just seeing things like that. I was like, wow. Uh, it's it's interesting and it's cr um like crazy, but at the same time kind of cool learning about some of the stuff that he's talking about and things. And so you know, this guy might be a bigger WWE fan than I am. Like you know, I just from time to I just watch wrestling every Monday and um Thursday, and then from time to time watch a WrestleMania or another event. But yeah, I've been yeah so far I've been to two WWE events: Monday Night Raw in 2008 and then no way out in 2009 and then since then it was just not since then but like 2006 i was watching wrestling and then 2008 i watched yeah 2008 and 2009 was a good year for me for wrestling because 2008 i think that was my first time watching wrestlemania like an actual wrestlemania event that was new and uh before i got I remember i got wrestlemania 21 on a dvd and then um, after that, it was like, uh, I think, I couldn't remember when I got that. But yeah, 2008, I went to Monday Night Raw. Kane busted my eardrums when he came out. Like, seriously, Kane, when he comes out, like, he surprisingly gets you, okay? Now, he, I don't know if he, like, I don't really see him doing it now when his explosions would go off. But no, I remember I was sitting there, I was looking at the ring, and I was just looking at the announce tables. And I was noticing how small it looks. Now I'm just looking, next thing you know, Kane just pops out, and I'm all like, wow, okay, can't hear anything now, but you know, like, you don't know if it's an explosion going off, or if it's just a wrestler coming out, and it's like, really, Kane, let people know when you're coming out, man, 
and then no way out finally seeing um jeff at the time jeff hardy i don't know if you guys just heard like a loud noise it was my uh headphones hitting the um my micro or it was like the wire hitting my microphone but no seeing my favorite wrestler jeff hardy at the time but now he's on tna and i really don't watch tna but um yeah, seeing Jeff Hardy, I was like, wow, this is... At that point, I was like, yeah, I'm done. Kofi Kingston said hi or said what's up to me at the end of the event. Yeah, it was it was a cool it was a cool thing, 2008, 2009. Probably those was my best two years of wrestling. And so, yeah, I have to say, I'm always going to be a wrestling fan no matter what. But, um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. I got some other videos I'm going to react to also. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, if you're new, please like and subscribe and uh, peace.